Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Jesse Jackson tries to shake down NFL, backfires so badly Andy Flag players get humiliated instead. Jesse Jackson, the world-renowned shakedown artist is up to his old tricks. Jesse's has been cashing in his civil rights hero chips for so long he thinks he is immune to criticism. He is wrong. We acknowledge and appreciate the struggles he went through to get equal rights for all people, no one doubts he went through hardships. But it is what he did after that we can certainly take issue with. For like most of the left, i.e. the Clintons and the Obamas, he immediately cashed in. In huge ways most people do not know about. Mostly through supposed protests of major American corporations that looked more and more like total shakedowns. And to make matters worse, the beneficiaries of his shakedowns tended to be his family members, not the community he claimed to protect. Here's is what went down from noted Chicago Tribune reporter John Cass. The King of Beers used Operation Push to launch a national boycott of Anheuser-Busch in the early 1980s. And although Anheuser-Busch was among the corporate leaders in donations to the United Negro College Fund and had a progressive employment policy 18% of the workforce was minority Jackson wasn't satisfied. Jackson would pour beer on the ground and say, but is a dud and offer other pithy rhymes. Once, he showed up at an Anheuser-Busch distributorship and cheered as 50 Southsiders poured four cases of beer onto the ground. August Bush has become to the economic reciprocity movement what Bull Connor and Jim Clark were to the civil and political reciprocity movement and obstruction in the doorway blocking black economic progress, Jackson said back then, comparing Bush to white southern sheriffs who sicked police dogs and cops on civil rights marchers. Then, a little over two years ago, Jackson's kids bought River North Cells and Service, the exclusive Budweiser distributorship on the north side. The Jackson Territory is about 62 square miles. Isn't that a nice uplifting story? Daddy Boy Gots. He becomes friends with Mayor Richard Daly. And later, as if by a miracle, the suns also rise. Owning an exclusive Budweiser distributorship is like a license to print money. As a postscript, the suns ran an absolute gold mine into the ground. But because the exclusive territory was so valuable they still made money when they sold it later. Imagine? Back to Jesse's latest shakedown. Jesse has been running around trying to put pressure on the NFL for how they are treating the players. According to Breitbart, Jesse went on Fox Sports 1's Undisputed and just embarrassed himself and the players. First he bashed Trump for calling anti-flag players sons of B, and then he went into full shakedown mode to go from picking cotton balls to picking footballs and basketballs without freedom is not very much progress, Jackson said, before adding the comment that made the NFL players hang their heads in shame. Jackson said that the NFL not guaranteeing contracts is illegal workplace harassment because dot wait for it dot the owners can cut any player at any time for any reason. And therein lies the humiliating rub dot for all their wealth and fame NFL players are really just like us at will employees who can be fired for any reason look if my boss made a new rule that says we have to say the pledge of allegiance in the morning i can do it quit or get fired no one said america was fair but everyone especially our enemies agrees that america is the best country the world has ever seen it is about time the nfl players showed it some respect share if you agree What CNN reporter was just caught wearing at the White House proves how fake they really are. CNN is a disaster, and they have Donald Trump to thank for their woes. In the last year, their ratings have fallen almost 40 percent, and it's not hard to see why. Rather than report the facts, CNN has become a fake news mill intent on taking down Donald Trump. They've falsely reported on things as large as the fake Russian dossier to silly stories that suggested that Trump photoshops the size of his hands in photos. 
Now, they're apparently embracing the fact that they lie to destroy our president. Before a Rose Garden presser today, CNN reporter Brian Karam was seen wearing a fake news hat. He personally tweeted a photo of the head wearer before the press conference began. Moments from POTUS at the Rose Garden. Think you'll like my hat? He wrote. Well, Trump probably won't like his hat, but he'll probably agree with it. Share so that everyone can see how proudly CNN embraces fake news. They can't be allowed to get away with their lies any longer. Tom Brady overrules Andy Flagg NFL players, fires shot heard loud and clear by every military family in America good leaders lead from the front. Something Trump knows intuitively and Hillary never could grasp. Can you imagine if Hillary had won and we faced a crisis that called for leadership? No one would believe her and worse, she wouldn't believe herself such is her every word scripted and focus group to death. That type of leadership does not instill faith because we are not stupid and know that even the best laid plans have screw-ups and it is what you do at that moment, how flexible, how smart, how good you are, but most importantly whether or not people believe you that will determine the result. No one believes a word Hillary says so even if she won she would never have been able to lead. We got lucky with Trump because Hillary probably beats any of the other GOP candidates. Real lucky. Another critical component of leadership is letting your actions do the talking, not your big mouth. Hollywood, nor Hillary ever learned that lesson and it shows. All talk, no action. Just like the lousy NFL players, who have ignored the wise words of Charles Barkley and Shaq to put their money where their mouths are, and continued their flag protesting ways yesterday. But not all of the NFL is doomed. There are leaders out there like Tom Brady who made his mama proud with what he did before his big game yesterday. While other NFL players loudly took a knee, look what Tom Brady quietly did. According to 27 Sports, Brady and teammates, active Navy member Joe Ardona, Matthew Slater, and Chris Hogan invited and donated tickets for 200 military members to the big game against Atlanta last night. Then Brady and Hogan met them on the field and gave them a proper greeting. What a difference huh? If you think NFL players should start acting more like Tom Brady and less like Colin Kaepernick share this everywhere. NFL finished. Roger Goodell is holding his head in shame after what just leaked about him. Commissioner Roger Goodell's future with the NFL is in question. The NFL has lost so much recently and it's starting to bury the league. According to Real Clear Life, the NFL has not responded well to the controversy. This includes a delay on a contract extension of Roger Goodell, according to ESPN. The anthem issue has overridden everything, and I do mean everything, a source told ESPN. Total viewership has dropped by 7.5% compared to last year. Many people are pissed that Roger Goodell takes a $212.5 million salary as well. Goodell is the highest paid person in the NFL and is destroying the league right now. Goodell makes more than Tom Brady, Eli Manning or anybody else in the league. The NFL has now lost 3.3 million viewers since Colin Kaepernick kneeled and has lost millions of dollars in income. Share this if you think that it's time to make the NFL great again and have players that care about this country. God bless all the soldiers that have fought and died for this country. They deserve better than to be insulted by some overpaid athletes. Joan Rivers comes back from grave absolutely destroys every whiny celeb in Hollywood. Joan Rivers is back and Hollywood will never be the same. Listen to Joan and change your wicked ways before it is too late. Joan does not and has never suffered fools and was never afraid to speak her mind. No matter it cost her. And it cost her plenty, believe me. Joan's daughter Melissa just released a book of long-lost letters to Joan from Hollywood celebrities and from Joan to other Hollywood celebrities. 
The books is called Joan Rivers Confidential and it looks to be a blockbuster. According to page 6, the letters with Joan include Tom Hanks, David Letterman, Bo Derek and Meryl Streep and Kathy Bates. If you hate Meryl Streep, you will choke on your morning coffee when you hear how pretentious she is in real life too. Streep wrote, Stephen Hawking and I could do a show about black holes, and then, I could disappear into one, a star collapsing in upon itself until it becomes at once invisible and incomparably dense. Whatever. What a pretentious celebrity but very indicative. Hollywood thinks they can chime in on anything like an expert while only holding just surface knowledge. Just like they do in politics. In fact hearing Merrill talk about black holes reminds me of her talking about Trump. Someone who knows nothing but demands to be taken seriously. Sorry Merrill, that ship has sailed. But the best, by far, of Joan's letters is what she told Hollywood about how to properly act. It is a blistering condemnation of all things that is wrong with liberal Hollywood. Joan told a fat joke about Kathy Bates and she was whining and crying. Hollywood can dish it out but they cannot take it. Always remember that. So Joan sent her a letter. One that every single celebrity in Hollywood needs to read right now. If they value their careers. The fact that people even know our names is a gift from God so relax, enjoy your fame and smile. Did you hear that Hollywood? Wise up before it is too late. The letter continued. Please know that I am a loyal, devoted, long-time fan of yours. P.S. I also took your side in misery, love and kisses, Joan XOXO. Hollywood and the NFL players take note. If you value your lavish lifestyles and fame and all that comes with it, stop the nonsense and the hate and the venom. Have fun, you got lucky. God gave you a gift. Don't waste it attacking America and Trump and inserting yourself in conversations you don't belong. Like Merrill talking about black holes. What a. Because if you do, you may find out what life is like without all that fame and fortune. Can you imagine how loud they would whine if that happened? Share this if you agree with Joan.